Praise the Lord. Well, tonight then, we're going to deal with the topic, um, Christ in another form. Christ in another form. Now, the, what we need to understand, in, first and foremost, is that we know that Jesus is God. We know that from the Bible. We know also that he has his angels, as his seraphims, his cherubims, and all of that. And he has human beings, the hosts of heaven, along with the hosts on earth. But first and foremost, we need to understand one thing, is that when you break it down, narrow it down, you only have, you have a number of creatures both in heaven and in earth. Creatures, everything else apart from God, are creatures. God alone is the creator. And there is only one creator. Now, um, when you think about righteousness, then you are talking about God. God is righteous. The creature from um, heaven to earth, while the angels were created spirits and they are righteous, but when you put the angel righteousness, their righteousness before the person who is righteous, they had to cover their faces, so to speak. Yeah? Because in truth and in fact, God is righteousness. Right? Everybody else take, take it like God is the generating plant. And everybody else get me a little 110 and 220 from it. But God is a generating plant. All right. So God is the one who can um shut down everybody. But if you pull out a bulb out of the circuit, it can shut down the generating plant. But the generating plant shut down every activity. Shut down. Right? So that God is like that. And then when we come to know him um, and understand him, and later on I'm going to show you the difference. Okay. But when we come to know him in the way that he should be known, because you will be surprised later on, I'll show you that you can be talking to him and that you know that you are talking to him. All right? Okay. So um, we, tonight then, looking at the topic, Christ in another form. Now, what we need by another form? Um, when we get later on, we'll show you something. But just to start out by saying to you that Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, is king of kings. He is lord of lords. Right? He is the creator. And everybody else are creatures. He is a king. And therefore, everybody is subject to him. Let us look at the United Kingdom. Let us look at England, for example. And we just have a new King Crown, King Charles. Now, it's not possible for England to have two kings. It just don't work, right? It just don't work, all right? You, you have one king at a time. So everybody else, and the king is the head of state, everybody else is subject to the king, all right? Um, now, when the king rule, when the king rule, whether he's on his throne or he's walking or driving on the street or whatever, or going to a function, he may dress in different forms, but that doesn't take away his authority. 
So let us say he's going to a football match, to watch a football match, and he's dressed in his sweatsuit, for example. He doesn't have all his crown and all those things, but that doesn't say he's not king. He is still king, all right? So let us look now at um, one of the things that affect a lot of people is not so much God. If you talk about God, there was so much affect them. But once you talk about Lord Jesus Christ and to say he is God, then then you start to have a problem. Not everybody are able to see that. All right. Because later on I'll show you why they are not able to see. Good. But for now, I just want to start off and I want somebody to help me tonight reading Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Uh, yeah. Can us use your Bible tonight and just read it for me. Help me quick so that we move on because we need to get down into something tonight. Quite some time we have not been here, so <laughs> let us make a good show of it tonight. Psalm 100. Psalm 100. Mm -hmm. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Yeah. Serve the Lord with gladness. Yeah. Come before his presence with singing. Okay, so we know that. One of the rules is that we should make a joyful noise unto the Lord all lands, right? And we should serve the same Lord with gladness, and we should come before the presence of that same Lord with singing. Good? Right. So we have him now as a Lord. Continue. Know ye that the Lord, he is God? No. Stop again. So know he that the same Lord that we say make a joyful noise unto the Lord, know he, this knowledge start to increase now. So you must know, not just believe now, but you must know that the Lord, you see what I call Jesus, he is God. Read. Really? It is he that has made us. So when we say, come, let us uh, let us make man in our image, here we see line upon line, precepts upon precepts, here a little and there a little. We learn now that it is he that has made us. And not we ourselves. And not we ourselves, right. We are the sheep, we are the sheep of his pastures. We are his people. And we the are the sheep of his pastures. And we are his he that has made us. us and not we ourselves. Right. We are his people, his people mm -hmm. and the sheep of his pasture. And the sheep of his pasture. Good. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving mm -hmm. and into his courts with praise. Yes. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. Sorry. Somebody, somebody, um, Galaxy, you are, you are hungry, please. Galaxy. Okay, yes, continue. For the Lord is good, mm -hmm. his mercy is everlasting, yeah. and his truth endures to all generations. To all generations. So we learn now that. We should know that the Lord, he is God. So we don't have to call him anybody. The Bible tells us that. Because one of the things that we should try to do is to get whatever we are saying to be Bible-based or Bible-backed. So we know then that the Lord, he is God. So some people see him as Jesus, but don't realize that he's God. Good. And that's why we're talking about another form, Christ in another form. Good. Right. To back up that, we look at Ezekiel 30, verse 32. Ezekiel 30, verse 32. And in the meanwhile, could somebody else find Jude 24 and 25? But let's look at Ezekiel first. Ezekiel 30, verse 32. And somebody else, please find Jude. Jude that's one chapter there. So you're 24 and 25. And then we move from there. We just want to make sure we put him in his right place and put him in his right perspective. Good. So we learn now 
that the Lord is God. So whether we want to call him God or we want to call him Jesus, it doesn't really matter because we know that the same Lord he is God. Okay? So Ezekiel 30, verse 32. Ezekiel 30, verse 32. Ezekiel, Ezekiel 30, stop at 29, sir. Pardon? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. Sorry. That's 76. Sorry. I'm very sorry about that. Um, Jude 24 and 25, please. Sorry. Jude 24, 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling yes. and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Yes. To the holy wise God, our Savior, be glory no. and majesty. Just, just a minute, Brother Brown. Just a minute. We are talking about the only wise God. The only wise God. So if there is any other, at least, they don't reach up to the standard of wisdom of our God, who is our Savior, which we know is the Lord Jesus Christ. So we talk about the only wise God. Good? Amen. Read. To the holy wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Good. Thank you. So we, we place him in his right perspective now because we know that he is the only wise God. All right. Dominion and power of everything belong to him. But may I tell you that not everybody is going to see him that way. Some people are going to see him as, let us say, those who when he came in the flesh as the firstborn, amen. Some people are going to see him in different offices. So if you look, for example, at Matthew 13, 53 to 58, we look at some way in which people see him. We are talking about Christ in another form. Good. So Matthew 13, 53 to 58. And we look at that, or some people see it. Because you see, it's not an academic exercise, you know, it's a revelatory one. Good. It's, and um, people don't see him sometimes for who he is. Sometimes because he was grown up, let's say, in Nazareth or so, and they see him in a particular way. All right, but um, as I said, you can come in other forms. Good. So, Matthew chapter 13, 53 to 58. And it came to pass. And it came. Very. And it came to pass uh -huh. that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue. In so much that they were astonished and said, Whence had this man this wisdom and these mighty works? When this man, when where he got his from, huh? wisdom and these mighty works. Now, because we know him, we know also that he is wisdom, and all wisdom come from him. Bible say, if we lack wisdom, we should pray to God, right? So he is wisdom, he is knowledge, he is understanding, he is just everything, he is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. That's that, that is the God that we are talking about. But not everybody is going to see him in that light, right? Read. Is that this the carpenter's son? Okay, so the next thing now we see, relegate him down to, of course, if you look at it,
from um, the physical, you will see him as a carpenter's son. That is the son of Joseph. But when you do further analysis, you will realize that he's not the son of Joseph. He's not the carpenter's son. Because if you remember, when um, Mary was found with child, Joseph wanted to put her away. Because, but because he was grown up with them, then he you know people see him as a carpenter's son, right? So at, at, at that level, you can't blame him for that. So they are seeing him as a carpenter's son, really. Is not his mother called Mary mm. and his brethren, James and Joseph? Mm. Hold on, just a minute. Let's go to the mother and father now. The fa with, the, with the father, let's go to the mother. Um, I'm here to say that Mary was not a biological mother. Mary was a vessel utilized by God to bring forth his son into the world. Because if Mary was a biological mother, then the blood of Mary would be in him. And therefore, his blood would not be a precious blood because Mary was born in sin and chief iniquity. So um, Mary was just a vessel, but we have to say, is this Mary the mother of Jesus, right? We understand that at the primary level, but when we move further up, we know that Mary was being that his mother, the truth. But, yeah? um, and somebody tell him about his mother, I said, who is my mother? And who is my father? They that do the will. You know? So when you move at another level, you start to see it a different way. All right, his mother, Mary, and his brother, James. And Joseph and Simon mm. and Judas. Mm. Those are yes. yes, thank you. Okay. It's all right, that's enough for me. Uh, so, we, of course, it's very yes, and we can't say no. Right? <laughs> we can't say no to that. And, and that's why uh, there's a book years ago they call The Student Companion. And the Student Companion seems not to discuss religion, you know, because it's end of nowhere. Because mm -hmm. everybody have their view, right? And mm -hmm. you, you respect other people's point of view. So why you, you don't um, hear other people's point of view? You just put forth your point of view, all right? And listen to your point of view. And respect other people's point of view, all right? Good. So we learn now that some people see him as the carpenter's son and as Mary's son. No problem with that, all right? Um, Mark 12. Mm -hmm. Mark 12, yes, okay. Mark 12, 35 to 37. We you can read my balance in your whole time. All right. Mark 12, 35 to 37. And when we go on, we will see that people have different views of him. And as I said to you, it is not an academic exercise you know about the Lord. No, um, it's a revelatory one. It's something that God has to reveal to you. So a lot of people who write books and put up items on Google and all those things. They have no idea about who the Lord is. All right? But from an academic point of view, then you have to respect their views. Right? But I'm just saying to you that to know about the Lord is more revelatory. All right? Good. So Mark 12, 35 to 37. I'm going to read for and Jesus, And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple. You, you can read a little louder for me, Brother Brown. You can read a little louder for me. Okay, okay, sir. And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple. How say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemy thy footstool. Yeah, because David listen, said, hold on, just a minute. We see him as son of David. Fine. And if you check the genealogy, you will see he go right back to David, right? But we have a big question in that one. If he is David's son, 
then why David call him Lord, you know? And, uh, but by further analysis now, we realize that he also is a root and the offspring of David. <laughs> so um, he is David's Lord, right? He made David, but he chose to come through the line of David. So he's both the root and the offspring of David, right? So if you want to call him David, son, thou son of David, uh, we won't quarrel with that. And that is one of the problems today with, with religious thinking, is that all people see it, you can't nullify that, eh? because that's how they see you, right? And um, if you see him another way, then okay, you know? Um, but if you try to synchronize thoughts sometimes, it never did work. All right, let's finish up, brother Brown. David therefore himself called him Lord. And whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. Go further down. Yeah, thank you. It's okay. Okay. Now, Hebrew, sir, Hebrew 3, verse 1. Hebrew 3, verse 1. Let's look at it again. From another perspective. Hebrew chapter 3, verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle, consider the apostle high priest of our profession, Jesus Christ. Hold on. Start again. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle high priest of our <laughs> and high priest. Apostle and high priest. The, the apostle and high priest. And high priest of our profession. No, the apostle and high priest of our profession. profession. Christ Jesus. Christ. Jesus. Now, when you tell people that um, we have, for example, 12 apostles, and you will tell people, and that is understood at that level, good? When you tell people that you have prophets, human beings, it is understood at that level. But when you move up from the valley, up into the mountain, then you start to see it another way. All right? So the prophet that come, like Jeremiah and Isaiah and all those people that come, they are not prophet in their own right. They are instruments being used by the prophet. So the prophet is the Lord. So when they come, they don't say, don't say Jer Jeremiah, I don't say Isaiah. They say, does say the Lord. So, so to get the message, the Lord use those men or women as a vessel. So the real prophet is the Lord. Because he is the one who initiate the message. All right? The apostle that we have, the apostle meaning people who are eyewitnesses who are there directly taught by the Lord and so forth. But the Lord himself is the apostle. And the other people now that are given that title, but if we should put it this way, um, the head of the apostle is Christ. The head of the prophet is Christ because they don't initiate anything. Anything they're saying that, for example, makes scripture or whatsoever, it is as to be directed by the Lord. So we know that when the apostle preach or when the prophet prophesy, they did not sit down and write out something on their own. 
right? They have to say, thus said the Lord, right? And so forth. Good? So that, that's, that's for that. Now, we come to another segment now that we want to look at um, how when we are in the company of the Lord, it is a possibility that we can, let, uh, let me put it this way, we can be in the presence of angels and we don't know. All right. Now, the angels were made spirits, but when the angel come to Mary, when they go to Manoah, when they go to Lot down in Sodom, they're not spirit. It was flesh. So the angels can move from spirit to flesh, to spirit. And that is why some people have a problem when it comes to the Lord himself, because the word was made flesh. And so the, if the angel can come as human being and move around, and sometimes the Bible says you may entertain angels unaware, good. The men in Sodom did not know that they were looking at angels. They thought they were just normal men, good. Now, if angel can do that and come in flesh and go back to spirit, then can you imagine the creator? If the creature can do that, then can you imagine what the creator can do? All right, so um, we we now look at St. Luke 24. We go to St. Luke 24, 13 to 20. Very important now. We're going to unveil something right now. Bridging, you have to try and help read, you know, please, please, help. We won't just burn one person or two. All right, St. Luke 24. 13 to 20. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village for Amos. Amos. Yeah. And was from Jerusalem, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. Mm -hmm. And they talked together of all these things which was happening. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. No, so these men were coming from Jerusalem. They uh, saw the crucifixion and all of that. All right. And they were talking about that on Amos Road. And while they were there talking, the Lord joined their company. It is very important that when we are talking, our conversation should be of a fashion that the Lord can join in. When we are, for example, when we are getting married, it should be of a state that the Lord can, we can invite the Lord. And whatever we are doing, by the saying all thy ways of knowledge thing. So it is good that whatever we are doing, uh, so in this case, the brethren were walking and talking about what took place and Jesus joined their company and could join into the conversation. Really. But their eyes were holding, and they should not know him. No, in this case, no. They were with him, but their eyes were not enlightened. All right? In other words, the revelation didn't reach them that they were in the company of the Lord. As I said to you, you can, it's not so much a high sight mm. or academic exercise. It is more regulatory one. Good? So the Lord can be in our company, walking with us like human being, and we don't know. So our conversation should be as such that we can join in. So in this case now, he was with them going along in this road, but they did not know him. Now, this is very important now. It is not good when we are in the company of the Lord and we don't know him, right? It is not, it, we should try to know him. And that's why Paul said, oh, that I may know him. We should try to know him. But in this case, the Lord set it in such a way that they wouldn't know him at all, right? Read. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that we have one of 
vulnerable as he was and our star. Mm -hmm. And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering and said unto him, Are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, Mighty indeed, and mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how he, I'm sorry, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day. Since these things were done. Now, if you notice, they were actually preaching, so to speak, to the Lord. Mm -hmm. They were bringing him up to date because as far as they're concerned, he was a stranger. Yes, as far as they're concerned, he was a stranger because this thing that happened in Jerusalem, I don't know who would hear about it. Right? So sometimes when the Lord comes in our midst, amen, he don't always tell us who he is. He wants to hear what we know about him. All right, and, and our knowledge about him. Okay, so in this case now, he just asks him, What you talk, who you talking about? What you talking? And they find it very, they, he must be a stranger. All right, because if you don't hear about the crucifixion and all that, well, I don't know. Anyway, please. yeah, and also, uh, yeah, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early as the follower. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen in a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to Sepulchre and found it even so, as the woman had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all the prophets I've spoken. Hold on. This now is very important that we are going to know. Right? And the Lord listen to them first. One of the things that the Lord will do, he will listen what you are saying first. And then he will know how to address the deficiency. All right? If you notice, he was then equal to anybody. And no, 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 no. He listen to them first. And then he's, no, then he said, after listening what they said, no. He realized that they, yeah, and in this yeah. case, in this case, he wasn't so fooled. Us in this case, don't mean um, the, the normal um, definition of a fool. You say that there's no God. No, that that what you're talking about. What he's talking about, this man, you you should understand the scripture. Yeah? If you know the scripture, then you would be saying this. All right, I read. Are not Christ? Yeah. Let me read verse twenty-five again. Mm. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at Moses? One minute, all... one minute, dear. Now this is what I want to look now. I'm going to show you something. Beginning at Moses, right? I'm going to show you the, just a little time that the Lord had that he, he actually teach them the entire Bible. So it's a big in that Moses. So you're talking about the book of Genesis, right? All of that. Yes, yeah, so a big in that Moses. I read. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets. And he went through all the prophets. No. In just one lesson, you know. Moses, all that Moses taught them. All that the prophets. Mine and major. Just one little jump in a few moments because he is the word. That's what, you know, so he could actually teach out the whole Bible within the Salican session. Yeah, read. Yeah, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. No. No, this is important now. This is very important. Listen, from Genesis to all the scripture that he went through, everything we're talking about him. <laughs> everything we're talking about him. Right? All the scripture is a word. 
he's talking about him, but sometimes we segment it and say, well, then this one was talking about that, but everything in the Bible has to deal with the Lord himself. And that's what he said to them here. That's a revelation, right? Because sometimes we don't know this. We just need to take out a party and make a party and so And this prophet said that and that prophet. No, 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 no. Everything is in heaven. If you go in heaven and look at the book in heaven, you will see that everything, the will of God must be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen? Right, read it. Go and they go. drew nigh unto the village, mm -hmm. where they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. Mm -hmm. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, mm -hmm. for it is towards evening, yes. and the day is far spent. Mm -hmm. And he went in and tarried with them. Yes. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, mm -hmm. and brake, and gave them. Mm -hmm. And their eyes were opened. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we are talking now. Because... All through this time, their eyes were closed to spiritual things. Things spiritually, they were their eyes were closed. And if the Lord don't do something to the mind's eye, no, because you know so much physical, like and they were looking at him right through the time, right? Is the eyes of the mind now that was dark? Sorry. The eyes of the mind's eye that was darkened, even though they were walking with him and they were talking with him, they still was not yet enlightened. All right? The people that sit in darkness, they have great light. Light coming to them now. So their eyes now were open. Really. And they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Thank you. That's enough for me. So when he allow their eyes, the mind's eye, spiritual eye, to be open. Then they know him at that time. But all the while they tell him about himself and they did not know him. Because they were they were asking, are you a stranger here? And you don't, and they were telling him about himself. Now, I, I, I jump fast forward a little and show you something. There was a man called Apollos. The Bible said he was very mighty in scripture, all right? But he only knew up to the baptism of John, but he was mighty in the scripture, all right? So what happened? There are two people, man and wife, Aquila and Priscilla, took him and taught him the word more perfectly, all right? So you can know up to a point, all right? But there's another stage to go. And I'm going to show it down when I go a little further, what I mean by the other stage. All right? Good. Now, if we look at Matthew 14, 23 to 29, we look at Matthew 14, verse 23 to 29, we see something here that I want to point out also before I get on to. You see, it is... It is not, let me put this way, if I should put that away to you. In the kingdom of God, it is God who, who enlightens us to the scripture. It is God who opens more understanding. That's like what he said to the Lord, he so opens their understanding so that they understand the scripture. There is line upon line, precepts upon precepts, here a little, there a little. And when we when we are hope, when we are enlightened, when God enlightened our eyes, then we can see the, 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 the women that went to the sepulchre and they saw the angel, and the angel told them that he's not here, he is risen. The people who did not reach the sepulchre yet, especially a man named Thomas. Thomas said, I'm not going to believe. But there are some people who are further, who went to the sepulchre. Some people who were sleeping. All right? So you can't tell the person about the sepulchre that they, they didn't see the angel and talk to the angel. You cannot everybody see that. All right? So um, St. Matthew 14, 23. And when we and when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. 
And when the heaven was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossing and waving, for, for the wind was contrary. Hold on, just a minute, just a minute. The... Just a minute, Brother Brown. Just a minute. So he fed people and let them satisfied. And after that, he goes a little higher. All right, so he leaves from off the plain and he go up into the mountain to pray. Now, when I come down any further, I'm going to show you that you can get distinction down in the plain where you feel the tests on the mountain. Um, when you're at primary school, if they give you to take two from one and you write, I can't, you are correct. And if that was the only subject you get, if that was the only um, problem you get to solve, then you get 100%. Because two from one, I can't at the primary level. Now, when you go up to the secondary level, though, if they ask you two from one and you say, I can't, then you feel that test. See? So you can pass it very with colors down on the level. But when you go up on the mountain, no. So that's why the Lord sent them up. They heat and they gone up to the mountain to pray and to take the thing at another level. And I'm going to show you what I mean later on. Read. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went, went unto them. Oh, just a minute. The... Just, just a minute, Brother Brown. I just want to um, break down this fourth watch for people. All right? So um, on the seas, they are what they call watches. All right? So if you have, a, let us start it at 6 o'clock, and it's a 6 to 9, watch 1, 9 to 12, watch 2, 12 to 3, watch 3, and 3 to 6, watch 4. So it's somewhere in the 3 o'clock bells of the morning here. The fourth watch, right? That that time is silent night. That is the time that nobody wants to be on the sea in, in on the sea become contrary. Nobody wants to be out there that was in the early morning here. Yeah. Call the fourth watch of the night. All right. Yes. So at the fourth watch, now what happened? Oh, 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 yeah. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea. They were troubled, saying, it is a spirit, and they cry out for fear. Hold on, but hold on, hold on. Now, the same disciples that were with him, walking all along the way, just feed some people, and the Lord sent them across, and the Lord went to pray, all right, and they were troubling their ship. The same disciples saw Jesus walking on the sea. And the same disciples said, oh, he could he not give us a spirit. And they start to cry out for <laughs> fear. <laughs> now, now, those disciples are supposed to be healed. All right, let us say it was a spirit then. So many of them inside the ship. And one little spirit that come in, argument scene. And all them start to cry out. But the Lord came in, in a form that they could not recognize him. That's the point I'm getting at. All right, read. So they start to cry out for fear, brother. Mm -hmm. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Good. Thank you. That's enough for me. That's enough for me. So the point here is, and you know, I want to tell you, a lot of people beat Peter, you know, and beat the um, other disciples. But sometimes they take up for the other disciples and beat Peter. But Peter was the only one who was brave enough, you know. To step out at that hour of the night and on a water like that. And, you know, uh, Peter was at a hedge above them. 
Because all the other ones, they would say, he's, he's shaking like earthquake. <laughs> because they would come out. But at least we can credit Peter for that because Peter come out. And, and at least Peter allow us to know now that with Christ, all things are possible because we can really walk on water if we believe him. Amen. So um, here he appeared to them in a form that they could not recognize and they say it's a spirit. But is this is, is this plan? Is this a policy? Is this a way that the Lord can come into your company and we don't know? All right? Or is it by accident that it happened that way? All right? Or is it a deliberate thing? All right? Let the scripture talk to us then. For us to know if it's a deliberate, good, let us look at Mark 16. Mark 16, 9 to 14. Mark 16, verse 9 to 14. Because you see, one of the things that we don't want to have to us, we don't want angels, for example, to come. Let us say God said angel to us, an angel to us. And we are there talking to that person, but we don't realize an angel. Huh? If you're not. Yeah. Um, but the person who is connected to God will realize the message that come to you, all right, you will realize. But sometimes the message that come to you seems so impossible. So, for example, to go to Abraham and Sarah and tell him that they're going to have a child at that, it seems really impossible, right? And sometimes, how do you know? Right? And, and suppose the Lord didn't come in the way that you know him, the orthodox way that you know him. Suppose he come in another form, what happened? Show us off, not true? All right? Mark 16, somebody read 9 to 14. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. Now when Jesus was risen early, the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Yeah. And she went and told them what had happened, what had been with him, as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard, and they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that, he appeared in another form. Hold on. You hold that. That's the point I want to get. So he appeared to Mary in one way, but he also appeared in another form. What is that form? That form that, you see, sometimes you know him this way, right? And you understand him to be so. But remember now you're talking about God. And if, you, if, if we have the angel that can, who are spirit that can come um, in flesh and still become spirit after a while, so they finish their control. Then what about the creator? The creator can come in another form. And here we are, the Bible is telling us now that the way in which the people know him, he appeared just like an, an Amos road, right? They don't know his him. Because what? They have a straight line thing. And it's not a straight line. You know, when you're um, in, um, in, in basic mathematics, when you, when you have a, an equation to solve and you see a square, like you said, 2x square, you know the end product of that is going to give you, if you have to solve it graphically, you will know that you're getting a curve because it's a square. But if you just have 2x and 2y, and so you know it's a straight line graph you're going to get. All right? Now, we are saying to you now, that Jesus can appear in any form he wants to appear. And he can reveal himself to, into anybody he wants to reveal himself. Now, we learn, let me just show you something. We learn from Daniel that the angel 
God sent his angel to stop the mouth of lion. Daniel told us that. That is scripture. But over in the, the fiery furnace, uh, we learn the, 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 the Shadrach, Mishra, and Abednego did not tell us that God sent his angel to stop the fire. But ne Nebuchadnezzar told us that he saw the fourth one. And the fourth one looked like the Son of God. <laughs> it makes scripture. Right? And then we don't know what happened to the fourth one after they come out of the fire. All right. But Daniel told us it was angel that come to do that. All right. So we have to understand that as we go along, the Lord will um the Lord will reveal himself to us, and that is what we call revelation. That's what we really want to get is the revelation. All right. So if we look, for example, at St. Luke 10, St. Luke 10, verse 21 to 24. St. Luke 10, verse 21 to 24. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in this in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, Father, for so it seems good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father. And no man knoweth who is the son, who is it the son is but the father, and who the father is but the son, and he to whom the son will reveal him, and he turn him and he, he turn him unto his disciple and said privately, Bless thou the eye which see the things that he see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which he see and have not seen them. And to the hour and to the horror, those things which he hear and have not heard them. Thank you. Thank you. You see, we should understand that the Lord will reveal to us, he will reveal to us heavenly things. Good. But what we are seeing now, and consider it simple, great prophets of old would like to see what we are seeing now, and were not able to because it was not time for them. No, God revealed things as we go along. Good. So when well, you find that what was in from the wise, yeah, it will reveal to babe. The babe don't learn it, you know. So you have some little babies coming up now, and you're surprised to know something that they know. And we are looking at it and say, How? Oh, I, I have I have a grandson and what he's doing now. I can remember it maybe at age nine, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. All right, but knowledge increase as we go along. And God also will reveal things that was hidden from the wise and prudent to babes and suffering. So, you see, you have to understand as you go along, as you go along, then God will give you um, information, right, that we couldn't know of, we just couldn't know. So, don't blame the, the gentleman that came to the Lord, and the Lord said to him, Listen, you must be born again. Right? Don't blame him when he said he, th he thought more or less that he has to go into his mother's womb and, and come out. Right? Don't blame him because if 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 the revelation of the word, no, if I say the Bible is not like a newspaper, you know, no, the Bible is the word of God. So don't blame people if they don't see. You. The thing, especially when they read it one time, no. So they have to read and read and read and read until God see your desire and hope your understanding. 
So the Ethiopian Bureau was really in Isaiah 53, but you just couldn't fathom what it is saying. And if you talk to some people, they tell that the Bible is contrary because they don't understand it. It's confusing because they don't understand it, right? And no, it's not, it's not, um, it's not, um, it's not that. It's not a matter of if God don't reveal it to you, you just can't get it. Because it's, it's, the scripture itself is spiritually inspired, right? And it's, it's like it's loaded there. So it's not just one idea you get out of a passage of scripture. You can get a lot, billions and billions, and it can. And that's why the Bible is so compact. Because if, 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 if all the things were to be written, the whole world couldn't contain the books. So you see, the, the, that's why it is so loaded. So when you get one verse of scripture and you give a million preacher to preach on that verse, you get a million different message. And if you give a billion again, you get a billion different because it's a lot of things and everybody will get the new revelation out of the same scripture. All right. So that's what we have to understand. So that's how the Bible is, and we have to understand it. All right. Now we need to look at um Saint Luke 10. Did you read Saint Luke 10? 21, 24. Read it a while ago. Okay. Okay. We we'll move now to um Matthew 16, 13 to 18. And this is something that we say every day. But I just want to show you something out of it. Matthew 16, 13 to 18. Virgin, you can help and read it now, please. If you, are, if you are online and you're listening and you can help somebody, don't pressure your one person or two person. If you are interested, if you are online. All right? Verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Syria, Philippi, mm -hmm. he asked the disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Mm -hmm. And they said unto him, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed are thou, Simon bar Jonas, for flesh and blood are not to be this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Just a minute here. Yeah. So, the course of Caesarea Philippi, there is what we call a test and what we call tempt. Now, God don't tempt people. God tests people. All right? Now, as a matter of fact, we could easily well say they don't tempt people either, you know. <laughs> we could easily, because most of the time it's not they will tempt us, you know. Sometimes we say they will tempt us, but sorry, I'm not saying don't tempt it, it's a tempter, right? But I'm saying most of the time they will stand, stand by and allow us, allow us to see what we want. So when we are drawn away with our own loss, then the Satan just facilitated. That's what he's doing. He just facilitated. So it, it, the mistake he made now, because he, he, he did that with men over the years. So when he went up on the mount um, to tempt the Lord, he knew that if it was a human being up there, the first thing that man will want is food. So he put food to him, you know. So he just, the Lord know to fill in the blanks. We he would come and tell us, look, you're hungry, so, so and so on. You just, because we are drawn away, but that's what we enjoy. Satan don't test us with what we don't enjoy, you know. He tests us with what we enjoy. He tempts us, rather, with what we enjoy. Now, while the Lord now tests us to show a future generation where we were at a particular point in time. So then, another test that we go through is not for our benefit, all right? Um, let, let me find an example to show you. Um, let's think about Job. The test that Job went through 
was not so much for Job, you know, but it's for us. We would come and know that it doesn't matter what we are going through, God can be there for us. Joseph was in prison, but God go in the prison with Joseph, you know, inside the prison with him. Good. So it is a cloud of witnesses we have to show, and those people were were um, special people, I would say, right, that God can count on them, right? We have to reach a place that God can count on us. Not just every little thing come up, we just throw in the towel and uh, we can't bother. No, it's not so important, right? Pass your tests. When your tests come, pass them. All right. So in this case, the test now with, with, with um, the disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Good. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you, make a comparison here to show you that, um, what did they say? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. Well, just a minute before you reach it, go back to the other verse and tell us what other people said. And he said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Thou art John the Baptist. Okay. Some, not one person. Mm -hmm. Some say you are John the Baptist. So if you go into an assembly with these people, you will learn that Jesus is John the Baptist. All right? Well, some Elias. Some say Elijah. So if you are in the company of these people as a congregation, you will learn that he is Elijah. And others, Jeremiah, or mm. one of the prophets. And others said, you are Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Can you see the different doctrines that are out here now? A different assembly teaching different doctrines. Mm -hmm. Now, the Lord now must carry out a test, an attempt to. He's going to carry out a test on his own students. Sometimes you go to school, and teacher do a midterm test or something. It's not to harass you, but it's to see how much you assimilate, how much you understand up to that point. All right? So uh, most students are always afraid of tests, but we shouldn't be afraid of tests because it will help us also, because sometimes we don't know where we reach, you know. But the tests will tell us that, look, listen, you need to, you're weak in this area, or you're weak in this area, brush up on that area. So who do you now say, do my student now say? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are thou, Simon, by Jonas, for flesh and blood have not revealed this unto thee. Hold on. For flesh and blood, academics, the learning, don't reveal. Right? It inform, it don't reveal. And what we want is not just information. Because information, like what those other people have, will lead us into another direction. But he said, my father, which is? In heaven. Which is in heaven. What we really want now is the revelation of the word. Not just Google, what Google said, right? We want what the, the revelation of the word. God open up your understanding so that we understand. Otherwise, we'll be reading like the Ethiopian eunuch and we still don't understand or we interpret it another way. Right? So we have to be very careful when it comes. So he said, flesh and blood didn't give you this. i tell you something. I've been to a, a, a theological college and we were discussing one day about um, Jesus. And everybody giving their <laughs> views. And everybody in concert came up that the Jesus then is a part of the God, right? No, I was the old, uh, I would think I was the old, the apostolic, yeah, right? And then I, when my time come to make my contribution, I said, which way to, which way to bring this over that they would understand the oneness? Because for us to know, you know, brethren, remember, Jesus is not a part of the God, you know? 
These are things that are in a second person that they know that everyone else not can. The fullness of the God, it is in him. He is not in the God, the God it is in him. All right? So I didn't go that route because I'm going to be too technical. So I said, let me go to one that is more physical that people can see. So I said to them, okay, let's look at it from this point of view. Um, you have a caterpillar. <laughs> I was going to tell you the caterpillar and do chrysalis and do butterfly. But literally, said, don't bother with it. Don't bother with it. Don't bother with it. <laughs> don't shut me up. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't talk it, so I just leave it. So, but those people were very, very intelligent people. I can't match every brain, but what they don't have is a that, that's a thing, you know, that's a difference with it, you know. So you have some people who are this and that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But but if God don't give you the revelation, it doesn't matter, you know. You you, you can't get it, you know. Uh, read. Read. And Simon Oakley, and Jesus answered and said unto them, I'm blessed are thou by bonus, the flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Thank you. No, this is something that we are confusing even right now. All right, what the Lord was saying. The Lord said, up on this rock, I will build my church. Okay, fine. No. Mm -hmm. The Lord didn't say. He is going to. <laughs> oh, all right. If I put that away, easier. The Lord was not here to build a place with wood and stone in it. <laughs> it's not that he's talking about. There are some people still at the wood and stone stage. That is why when they when they show him Solomon great wandering and say, Oh, beautiful it is. And the Lord says, See that? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. <laughs> right? Because that's not the, 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 the church that he's building. All right. He's using now the lively stone, living stone, right? That is now going to build a spiritual house. So what the Lord is building right now is a spiritual house. Not wood and stone. All right. If you want to do wood and stone, you know, we can call any unsaved man, you know, and say, go over there and lay some block mm -hmm. and do some carpentry work and do some tiling. And do some... Of course. You can't... It's not that. That's not what the Lord wants. The Lord, we are lively stone now, building up a spiritual house. Mm -hmm. And that is where some people miss it. Because some people feel different. Everything that you do here, you know, it's going to burn up, you know. Everything, this, this world is going to be on fire, right? Everything that we do, you know, I'm not saying you're not to build places, so don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying the priority should be on the spiritual house. Not so much in the physical, because if, if you check Hebrew 11, you will see they want to kill and all about the place, and they were strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He's looking at these, the, the, the building blocks. Yeah, The building block should be strong yeah? in the power of his might. And that when you put black up and black, then you get it. Can you imagine you have a church huh, that is fully, that is fully in God, and the power of God is moving. It doesn't matter where it is on that tree. Once the power of God is there, that's what you really want, you know. You could be in a nice edifice. And, you know, cool like ice. <laughs> you, better, you better you're on that tree. And the power of God is moving. That's, that's, that's where we are now, right? Are there any questions so far? That's what I mean going on. Anybody with any question? Any, any comments? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, brother. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I just want to say something, you know. Um, I hear a touch um, on something about, you know, the enemy. You know, he's there waiting for us, you know, to um, choose whatever we want. So you see that for our desire. You know, but what, what when I... 
sit here and I was looking and oh, God himself, you know, can, you know, God is here, you know, which he prepared a table of good food, clean food for us, you know, and he called us to the table to enjoy that meal in his presence. No, we have to be careful when we sit at the table, you know, we are not come to the table of God with any gossip and with any other things that is we are out of the presence of God. <coughs> Sorry. We come to the present, you know, to you know, to acknowledge God, the presence of God, to acknowledge God in our presence, you know, and to give thanks, you know, of the food, you know, because if we do otherwise, then what will happen? You know, we will turn that food at that table into piles of food. You know, so we are the children of God. We have to be careful, you know, in our walk, in our daily walk, you know, when we, you know, come in assemble together, you know, in anything, you know. As yes, I, said, so I, get, I get your point. To, you know, I get your point. I get yes. your point. I get your yes, point. Sir. Yes, yeah. sir. I agree with you. I get your point. Okay. Um, I just want to make a comparison. No, with Peter, I just read this because time is really running. I, I just call it out of my head now um, for this one. Um, if you remember on the Mount of Transfiguration, the same Peter who got a hay down in the valley or in the level on the plain, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. When he went up to high school, when it was a primary school, he got a hay. Because you got blessed at those Simon but Jonah for flesh and blood. Okay, that's a hay distinction. But when he was, when he moved up to another level now, right? When he went on the Mount of Transfiguration, and then the Lord transfigured before him, and then you have Moses and Elijah joining with him. You know what the same Peter said? Lord, it was good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for the one for Moses, one for Elijah. Him get a zero there. At the same time, the man who got got um, distinction down the bottom when the Lord moved him high up to the mountain and get zero. We have to be careful now, okay. right? That we don't carry primary level education go to high school. <laughs> it was built on it when we get there and we get university level. Um, even though we go to university with a certain level, uh, we have to build on that now and the university work. All right. I want to show you something though that is causing some confusion um among um a lot of people, right? And it's just because we don't really stop to look at the thing, and I want you to look at it with me tonight, all right? And, and, and first and foremost, I told you when we started that there's only two categories you're going to have uh, in the world. You're going to have creature, and you're going to have creator. I told you earlier on that the creature, you have many, both spiritual and physical creature, but creator, you only have one. So that is why some people are in error. If you have three, four, uh, let me call it different. There are many gods, right? <laughs> Good. And some people are one god. Good. So you have to know because if you have many gods, then you have a problem knowing which one to to please. All right. So um, you have you either a creature. Or a creator. Now, in addition to that, the creature can have kinds, you know. So if you are a goat, let's say, you will have kids and they come just like the goat and the cow according to their kind where the Lord set it up. All right. Now, angels don't uh, marry and give into marriage, so they have angels don't have children. But um, angels were created spirits. But there's something I want, a key I want to give you tonight. And if you get this key right, you get everything right. Now, we talk about types and shadows. And we talk about order. There is type and shadow, and we have order. Now, 
the keynote, the creator cannot be a type of the creature, but the creature can be a type of the creator. That's all. So let me put it that way. You can say the typology argument. See, you can say Joseph was a type of Christ, but you can't say Christ was a type of Joseph. You get the point I'm saying? The, 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 the creator is the ultimate. Yeah. The creator is the ultimate. Good. So Christ cannot be a type of Joseph or anybody for that matter. But anybody can be a type of Christ. It all depends on the activity that go in the shadow that come with a type of. Right? Next thing. Christ cannot come after the order of his creature. But his creature, no, sorry, this one is the technical one. No, sorry. Christ cannot come after the order of his creature because there is no greater than him. He can come after the order of himself. But he cannot come after the order of a lesser being. When he wants to swear, for example, he can swear by anybody else lower than him. He had to swear by himself. So God will swear by himself. Because if he swear by any other being, that would be putting him below the creature. So no creature, not no cherubim, no seraphim, nobody, right? When you talk about righteousness, you're talking about God. And it doesn't matter how we feel we are righteous. When we go before him, we are filthy rats. Whether we like it or not. Now, the angel don't sin like us, right? The angel that in him right now. They don't sin like us. But the angels are not righteousness. Righteousness is God. All right? So they, they inherit. It's like a reflection. Right? It's like a reflection. They get the righteousness of God. So when Moses went up to speak with the Lord, he got his, a reflection, so to speak. Right? It was not generating from Moses. No, it's a reflection from God that when he came down to talk to the people, they couldn't look at him. And therefore, if an angel comes from the direct presence of God and talking to us in the form that we can't deal with it, we're frightened. You understand what I'm saying? So the order now, which is important, Christ cannot come after an order that is less than him. And there's no greater than him so you have to come off of the order equal to him, so to speak. Right? Right. Let me stop here. Are there any questions? If you get that part, then you'll get everything. All right? None? Okay, let's get to it now. And let me show you. So I want to pay particular attention now, and then I'll finish. I want to show you something. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Genesis 14, 18 to 20. Please stop it. Please query me on this one. Now, this is very, very important. Huh? Genesis 14. Yeah, Genesis 14, 18 to 20. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the most high God. Hold on, hold on. 
we know about the Battle of Kings. We know that they came and took away Lot. And Abraham went just summarizing and retrieved um, Lot and the uh, people and the stuff and so forth. And while he was coming back from the slaughter, he met, he met a person called Melchizedek. Good. And what you say he was? He was a priest of the Most High God. No, the first thing we must know, he was priest of the Most High God. Good. Priest of the Most High God. Good. That's and, where, that's where the, um, the, the mistake coming in, right? People misunderstanding this part of it, but let's go. Priest of the Most High God. Mm. And he blessed him and said, Hold on. And he blessed him. The next thing you know, he asks himself, Who can bless? Who can bless and who can curse? Who God bless, no man curse. <laughs> and who, who God curse, no man bless. Who can bless? But we won't deal with that. Yes. And he blessed him. Mm. And he blessed him. Okay. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, mm -hmm. possessor of heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. Mm -hmm. And he gave him tithes of all. Mm -hmm. And the king of Sion. All right. That is not for me. Now, there's something I want to show you about the, the priesthood, because we are dealing with just as priests here now. The priesthood, um, which we call the Levitical priesthood, which come from the tribe of Levi, as you know, they had no inheritance and the high priest and so forth. But there is something to know about the Levitical priesthood and the Melchizedek priesthood. There's two different things. Why we need to segregate them. Now, the Levitical priesthood was earthly in the sense that the priests, we notice here that Abraham gave ties to Melchizedek. All right? Now, sorry. But the um the Levites who receive tithes pay tithes, right? But Melchizedek who received tithes did not pay tithes. All right. Good. Now I'll come back to that. But let us look a little further um, into um Hebrew chapter six. Or if we jump down, no, let's jump. Time, time, right? Hebrew chapter 7. Hebrew chapter 7. That time is running. Right. 1 to 17. Oh, this match today. Hold on, Brother Brown. Hold on, Brother Brown. Why? I can't hear too well. For this match today, King of Salem. Priest of the Most High God. Hold on. So hold on now. We come back to another area now that we have to deal with. For this Melchizedek, we learned before he was priest. But now we are learning that he's king. So we, we can add to the priest with kingship. So he's both king and priest. Now, in the order of the mythical priesthood, the priest uh, cannot be king. The king would come from the tribe of Judah, and the priest would come from the tribe of Levi. But in this case now, we are having a total different situation. We are having the person as a priest, and the person is a king. Keep that in your mind, and let us look, on. Let us, let us look at his credential. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so let me read again. For this match, Chesedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the king and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by this inter, in, in, inter, um, interpretation, king of righteousness. Hold on. King of righteousness. righteousness. Now, 
anybody who raised to that position to be king of righteousness, yeah, it means that every other person who is righteous fall under that person. If you understand what I mean by righteousness, you know, king of righteousness. If a person, any any human being on earth, that tell me that they can qualify to be king of righteousness, then that person must be God. Anybody who qualified for that. Because if you understand what righteousness is, if you don't understand it, you know, with a different thing. But if you understand what righteousness is, the angel in heaven would never call themselves, you know. Because when they look at righteousness, they have to cover them face and cry, holy, holy, holy. Lord, God, because righteousness, my brethren, when they say you are king, the Bible describes a person as king of righteousness. Read. And not only that, but he is king of Salem, which is the king of peace. King of Salem, where Salem, you don't yeah, say Jerusalem, yeah. and is also king yeah. of peace. Now the credential. Without father. No. Hold on. He doesn't have a father. So even if he was created, even if he, he couldn't be created then, right? He couldn't be created. He couldn't be king of righteousness if he was created. Really couldn't be. I wouldn't fit that position. But it, let's take it for He has no father. Hmm. Without mother. He has no mother. That means, so that means no form of reproductive process was found in that person. He has no father. He has no mother. Without the sense? He has, you can't trace him. You can't trace him to know where. Let me do this to you. You can't trace the angels in time when God created them. You know? Of course. God created their creatures. All the cerebrum and cherubim and all, you can trace them to win God, God knew when he made them, he made his angel spirit and his minister of flame of fire, God knew that. But this particular person, you can't trace the person because the person have no descent. But, and in the point here, for example, with Jesus, mm -hmm. Joseph was not his father and Mary was not his mother because there was no trace of Mary's blood in him. Mm -hmm. So here it is saying that he had no father, and he had no mother, mm -hmm. without, and he was without the same. Mm -hmm. And having neither beginning of days nor end of life. Lord of mercy. He had no beginning, no virgin. I, I agree that some things were done in eternity. Yeah. Right? Some things were done in eternity. But even when it's done in eternity, the person who is the one God. At some, well, I don't know if I say time, because time is not the way, because I'm going to eternity now. But somewhere in eternity, right, God bring the angels into me, right, at some time. But when you read into the king of righteousness, who is God, right, you cannot find, how should I put it? My mind no gone, I can't. <laughs> because I've gone over eternity. I come on a time and I've gone over into eternity, eternity, which makes it difficult for me to find words to say no. But God is just God. All I can say, God is. God is. And this qualification, it cannot fit a human being. Right? Read. Having neither beginning of days nor end of life, mm -hmm. but made. Right on the, the Son of God. What it made in the similitude, the same way of how the Son of God, Jesus Christ, was made, is the same way, right? But in this time, he did not come for salvation. Mm -hmm. He didn't come to bring salvation to people, just like the, the king would tell you that the fourth one looked like the Son of God. He didn't come for salvation, he came for deliverance, right? And, and this sort of thing. So I, I the topic tonight, you know, is Jesus in another form? I'm trying to explain to you, and I showed you earlier on there, that Jesus can come in different forms and talk to people and people don't know. But what you must do is look at the credential, look at the person qualification, and then you will know. Any other person apart from God who fit this 
what we are talking about now, any other person that somebody can show me that can fit this qualification, then we have a serious thing up on our hands. Because as far as I'm concerned, the king of righteousness must be God. There's nobody who can be king of righteousness. Right? Only him can be the head of righteousness. I don't see which other creature you can tell me that can be the head of righteousness but God. No, nobody else I can see it. Right? Read. And he abided a priest continually. And he ab remember now, his priesthood, the Melchizedek priesthood, um, abided a priest continually. It was stopped. But the Levitical priesthood came to an end. Good? Because that was just a provision that God wanted the tribe of Levi to be there for temple worship to ensure that the, the spiritual affair of the Israelite is 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 see to right and and so forth. But in this case now we have a high priest, right, with Christ, who can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, right? And he didn't come after the order of Levi, but he came after the order. Now, if Christ is coming after the order of something. This, the thing can be greater than him, but must be equal to him. That's because there's nobody greater than God. As I say, it's real by himself, right? So if a person, if Christ is coming, he can come after the order of Adam, right? He come as the, the, um, the last Adam, good? but he can come after the harder of Adam, right? Jesus can come out for the heart of nobody but himself. Right? So anybody you put up the king of righteousness, then Jesus will come out of that same order. Read. With, um, now consider this. Now consider this great man. He was, um, let me read it again, sorry. Now consider how great this man was. Unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tent of um, the spoils. Mm -hmm. And verily, they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a, have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. Mm -hmm. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. Mm -hmm. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Mm -hmm. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he received them of whom it is written. Uh, it is witness that he liveth. And as I may also say, Levi also who received tithes, paid tithes One minute, yeah. to Abraham. The Levitical priesthood, when they receive the tithes, they must also give tithes. Just like us today, right? We receive tithes, we give tithes. Some people have it that they give a contribution, nothing like that. If you receive the tithes of the people, you must give a tithes. Good. No, that's Levi. So Levi received tithes, Levi, but Melchizedek, he can't pay tithes to anybody. So you would not see it in the Bible that Melchizedek paid tithes, but you see that Levi paid tithes. Because Levi paid tithes to a higher order. Right? Melchizedek, it stopped right there with him, so he can't pay tithes to people. You understand what I'm saying? So that, that's a difference in there. Read on for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Thank you. Stop here. Psalm 110, verse 1 to 4. Psalm 110, verse 1 to 4. And now we are looking at order and type. Good. As I said to you, that Jesus cannot come as a type of anybody. Right? Good. Um, Jesus cannot come after the order of somebody that is less than him. 
Otherwise, it will defeat the whole purpose. We must come after the harder. Uh, just like when we straight by himself, he had to come after the harder of somebody in the same line of him. Right? So over here and over here, you may call him different name over here, but the same person over here. You may not recognize him over here, but it's the same person over here. He can't come in the order of John Tapp, for example. I'm a sinful man, and nobody in the heart, Bishop Weber, no, he can't come in that order because we are human beings. Neither can he come in the order of Michael or Gabriel because they are creatures, just the same way. All right? Once Christ is coming after the order of a particular person, then we start to pay attention. Psalm 110, 1 to 4. Psalm 110, 1 to 4. We're going to read. We finish up now, so just, it's time to go. Nobody to read. Then the Bible read. Psalm 110. Yeah, one to four. One to four. Mm -hmm. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of in the beauties of holiness. From the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. And verse 4 now, the Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. Good. No, the Lord said unto my Lord. What did he say? And the Lord said, um, yes. Verse 5, now the Lord. No, no, verse 1. Verse 1, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. The Lord say it to the Lord. The Lord said unto my Lord. Say it to you. Sit down at my right hand to like make an enemy footstool. Who is the Lord? Jesus. Who is he coming after the order of what verse 4 said? The Lord has sworn and he will not repent. Mm -hmm. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Thank you. So the Lord will not repent. The Lord sworn and he will not repent because thou art a Priest forever. The Christ is a priest forever. Christ is a king forever. Christ is a lamb forever. Christ is a lion forever. Amen. He is everything. And when time would fail me to tell the world. But the fact of the matter is, is that he's a king and he's a priest. And there's nowhere else in the Bible where you see a person holding the office of a king and a priest simultaneously. It's either you're a king or you're a priest. But for the king and the priest to be held by one person, king forever, priest forever, after a particular order that Christ chose to come, then we say, we conclude that that person must be equal. We cannot be greater than, and it cannot be less than. Because you know about greater than God, and God cannot, Christ cannot be subject to somebody greater than him. There's no way. Search all over, you can't find nobody greater. All right? You will find somebody less than him. But he cannot, right. he cannot come and after his similitude, right? Even though he came in the form of a man, all right? By further analysis, you will realize it was not really a man in the Bible, but the man Christ Jesus. But Man in the term in, in in all the um biological fixtures of oh man made up. No, he's not that, but he came in the form of a man, right? So when we look at him, we see a man. But but today, when you look at us, you see us as human beings, but also we can have Christ in us, who is the hope of glory. 
All right. So God bless you tonight. Uh, very silent on the board tonight. <laughs> silent. But that's good. Um, any 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 question anybody have that you want to, to send forth? No? All right. All right. God bless you. God bless you. We are.